lovely and darling viewers, it's Jen here at Check Her Joy. Today I'm reviewing Missy series 1 and 2 from Big Finish Audio. These these focus on Michelle Gomez's character Missy from Doctor Who, who is a female version of the Master, kind of the Doctor's evil counterpart. Um, it's so much fun to just have Missy off on her own without the Doctor. She has this unique brand of being like completely psychotic. But also she's having tons of fun with it and it's this weird mix of like you're rooting for her because you, she's the main character uh, but also you're not because she's evil <laughs> and her plans you know her plans are just even when she starts off with a plan that doesn't seem that bad you know it's going to get worse and really these stories are fun if you love villains who really enjoy being villains this is a great great series. Um, I, I adore Missy so much. She's also a great version of the master because she's enjoying it. Um, we see this in like the new series, Doctor Who Masters, like Johnson's version also does this where he just like sparks and like revels in it and so does Missy. Um, but she's also a version of the master that is clinging very dearly to the doctor and wanting his attention and throughout the series and throughout her time with Peter Capaldi's doctor we see her shifting and kind of becoming good. So we're starting off with series one with a Missy who is completely off her rocker, completely evil um, and in series two we start seeing that change where she starts thinking about is this what she really wants to do? Could she be good? Um, which I, I love so much. I really love the master as a character and Michelle Gomez's way of playing her is so much fun. Okay, I'm gonna go through each of the- f there are four stories per series and there's two series here so I'm gonna go through all eight stories kind of separately. I'm going off the big finish synapses it kind of is my basis of what counts as a spoiler or not a spoiler for this. Um, and I will link to the big finish page for this because they are full audio productions so there are several voice actors in each of these, several producers. Um, I will go through each of the writers for each of these though. So yeah, if you want to know exactly who is working on these, uh, check out Big Finish's page because there's so many awesome people working on this. Okay, the first story we're introduced to is A Spoonful of Mayhem by Roy Gill. This one sees Missy as a governess in Victorian London around 1870s. Um, we're playing off the fact that Missy's costume looks like a Victorian governess to begin with and throwing her into that situation, literally. Uh, so like an, a quirky, psychotic, evil version of Mary Poppins or Nana McPhee. And I am emphasizing psychotic and evil because if you, that is exactly Missy's character through all of this. You don't know if you can trust her or not. Probably don't trust her, but she does kind of like lure you in and is very appealing. Um, it's fun. So Missy is governess to these two these two children, Oliver and Lucy. So Oliver's gotten kicked out of school for already doing things that are like not great and pushing boundaries. Um, so when he meets Missy, he's first like, oh, a teacher. But then he's like pulled into her sphere and her, like is following her around and is like kind of in love with her. Um, so it's a fun dynamic. And then we've got Lucy who is much more like proper and a good girl but then Missy's also kind of doing crazy adventurous things and so instead of having normal lessons they're going up to the Crystal Palace when like it's a museum that is like all the things from the British Empire that you can't see anywhere else in England. Um, so they go and look at Sphinx and exotic plants. And Lucy is also just like brought into like this can be our schooling, yes please. Um, but then it becomes a much bigger threat because Missy of course has her own plans that teaching is just how she's going about it. Um, so it's fun. It also brings in the London, the London Underground when it's first being built where it's like just trains going through London. Um, specifically the circle line plays a big part in this. So, so much stuff happening in this. This was, this was a definitely like a fun story that just like brought me in immediately. The second story is Divorce, Beheaded, and Regenerated 
by John Dorney. This one takes place in Tudor, England, specifically during the reign of Henry VIII. Uh, Missy ends up traveling here, but then getting kind of stuck. She has a vortex manipulator that's not working, and so she's trying to figure out how to fix it. But as luck would have it, the meddling monk is also stranded in Tudor, London, and he has a broken time machine as well. And so they are kind of reluctantly... So they kind of end up bashing together and get thrown into the story with each other. And there's this thing where they kind of both need each other, um, but also don't completely trust the other one for good reasons. They're both, um, both bad guys who each have their own motives. And their motives kind of overlap a little bit, as in they don't both want to be stuck in Tudor England for the rest of their lives. Um, so we have the meddling monk and Missy interacting with each other, which is just amazing. It is like the best part of these entire, both series really, is where the meddling monk and Missy are meeting up and they're like goading each other, especially Missy is goading the meddling monk. He's also, by the way, annoyed that everybody knows him as the meddling monk because he dressed up as a monk one time. But as Missy tells him, historical accuracy has got nothing on alliteration, dude. It also does center around Henry VIII and like the court at the time, like going into the palace and like politics and marriages and all the craziness surrounding that. But really the meddling monk and Missy together is the highlight of this episode. Story three is The Broken Clock by Nev Fountain. And this is like a film noir private eye story but mixed in with a modern true crime story and it completely breaks the fourth wall. Like there are a few moments, especially in the first story where we broke the fourth wall and like Missy's catching us up, but this one is completely, completely, it throws it out the window. Basically there is no fourth wall in this story. Um, so we have this mysterious, we have this ring of mysterious murders happening that this a cop in New York cannot solve and he is recounting it for this true crime story but everything that happens in it is this very noir fashion to it including Missy showing up and uh, impersonating a detective from Scotland Yard um, it's crazy I loved it they spent a lot of time in a museum um, it's I actually liked this one. Some people were reviewing and saying they didn't because it's so far outside the normal Doctor Who narrative and the way that it is told, but I thought it was so much fun and it was so great and it also has a very, very fun twist at the end that I just, if for no other reason, that twist at the end was like the best part of it. Um, so I actually enjoyed this one a lot. I enjoyed almost all of these, by the way, um, which you're probably just gonna keep hearing. Four is The Belly of the Beast, and I didn't write down the author. I'm sorry. Um, this one sees Missy subjugating an entire planet. So she lands, she's taken over, everyone on the planet is her slaves. They're being forced to mine for some mysterious artifact that Missy can't locate. But we are entering the story quite a few generations into Missy already having taken over, and we're seeing it from the perspective of the slaves. And these slaves who are trying to escape and they eventually run into a rebellion um, and so we have a slave rebellion popping up too and of course Missy in this one nothing goes anywhere near what you're expecting it to go as um, and this definitely has some of Michelle Gomez's like best voice acting happening in here and it's just it was fun, but if I had to pick one of these to be like the weak part of the series, it's probably the fourth one. Two is the Lumiat by Lisa McMullen. This one has Missy showing up and being bored basically, so she's just wreaking havoc because she can. Uh, like the very first scene is that there is this battle going on, we're in the middle of a war, and we find out that it's entirely Missy's fault, that it was actually just a picnic happening. And Missy used mind control to make everyone think that they were in a battle and so they've been fighting and she conveniently provided weapons and it's just wreaking havoc because she can. She's Missy. Why not? Um, but two things are happening in here. First she tries to take a companion in this guy named Bertram who doesn't really want to be her companion. Um, 
And he would be like a great companion for the doctor, but for Missy, it is not working. Like a few of the stories in series one saw her have companions who were like brought into, who were like in awe of her because she has so much power and because time travel and she is very appealing. Um, but this is one who was like, what are we doing? Um, wasn't fully on board. And then the major part of the story is actually her meeting this other Time Lord called Lumiat, Toilet Time Lady. And Missy thinks that this is another version of the Doctor at first, but then finds out that it's not. It's really a Time Lord who is basically trying to emulate the Doctor and is like a do-gooder, trying to go in and do what the Doctor would do. And it just really gets on Missy's nerves. And the entire focus of the story is the two of them basically clashing and Missy trying to figure out who this woman is and why she's meddling with what Missy's doing. So it's not the most fun story to listen to, um, but it did also bring in some interesting aspects to Missy's personality as she starts thinking about why she's so captivated with the doctor um, and obsessed with him, her, them. Um, and we also see the spark where Missy starts thinking about her actions and we start seeing that transition like throughout her entire time with Peter Capaldi she like switches and kind of becomes the better character and is somebody who you could possibly see being good um and being redeemed and this is like that spark that start for Missy in these audio series. Story two is Brimstone and Terror by Roy Gill. Um this one Missy takes over as the headmistress of this boys boarding school in Scotland only she completely rewrites the curriculum so that they are actually training to be in war. So like a military school out of a normal British boarding school and she's training them to be her own personal army. Uh, but one of the students at this school is Oliver from series one and he immediately recognizes Missy and is trying to convince the other students to help him like rebel but they're like no what this is fun she's great we like her um, she's the headmistress. What are we doing? No, we're not gonna help you. Um, so he then rides home and enlists his sister Lucy, and one of the teachers at the school is actually Strax from the Pastoneris gang, because Victoria London, remember? Um, so Strax, the Centauran, actually starts helping them, uh, bring Missy and this army down before she can actually cause any more chaos other than influencing these young men. Uh, it was fun seeing Lucy and Oliver again and to see Strax pop up in a Missy story, but this one's kind of weaker in a way. I just am not a fan of army stories. The third one in series two is called Treason and Plot by Gemma Aerosmith, and this one focuses on the gunpowder plot, um, the whole Guy Fox story. Missy's trying to attract the attention of a government agency, a time agency, that specifically monitors for discrepancies in major historical uh, historical situations. So the gunpowder plot is a pretty big part of English history. Um, Guy Fox and his gang were trying to blow up Parliament and their plot doesn't succeed. Guy Fox is the one who was caught and so he takes the blame and so that's why history remembers Guy Fox. And Missy shows up and is trying to help this this gang of rebels with their plot so that they do blow up parliament and that it attracts the attention of history. Um, so that's what she's trying to do. She's being manipulative. She's trying to help them and they still aren't sure if they should trust her because obviously she's a woman but also like she's Missy. Um, but this also introduces a time agent called Rita Cooper um, who is her her first post in the time agency is to make sure that nobody interferes with the gunpowder plot and she ends up having to take on missy and her very first go as a time agent um and the whole cat and mouse thing between the two of them is kind of funny um and also seeing them try to change history and then have the other one try to put it back it was so much it was great i like this story a lot story four is too many masters by john dorney uh, this one has the meddling monk showing up again, um, and he actually manages to capture Missy, and she's a prisoner, except the Agrons show up, who are a alien species that originally showed up in Frontier in Space, 
where the master used them to start a war between Earth and another planet. Um, but they never actually got paid for it. And so they want their payment plus interest from the master. Only they don't know who the master is because regeneration. And even when Missy point Black tell point blank tells them I am the master, they don't believe her because she's female and so they assume the meddling monk must be the master. And so we have this whole dynamic between this alien species who's pretty much very um, misogynistic and sexist, uh, even though they have a female leader, and uh, Missy and the meddling monk meeting up again and continuing the repartee, which is just awesome. I love it. Uh, this one was really fun, actually. I enjoyed the story, and I don't want to spoil it for you, so go listen to it. So, on the whole, really enjoyed Missy's Series 1 and 2. I think Series 1 was actually stronger than Series 2. Um, we've got three really strong episodes versus two really strong episodes in Series 2. I love the unpredictability of the Master and Missy showing up, and just, they have so much fun with it. Oh, it's so great. I really like this one. So they both got four stars from me. Um, they would have been five if there just weren't a couple episodes in each of them that just wasn't really gelling with and that interested in kind of was zoning out of a bit. So four stars, still solid out of five, you know, love it. So go check these out. Missy series one and two from Big Finish and the link to the page will be, the link to the official Big Finish will be down there. Yeah. So Peace out. I love you all and keep reading. Bye.